So thank you very much, Biotech. Thank you, Dr. Bhamre and the esteemed faculty here and friends. Uh, as we know that medicine is all evidence-based, and evidence goes and comes back. So we all started, the earth is around, and we always start as fashion. The bell bottoms, they go off, narrow bottoms come in, and again bell bottoms come in. So that's the way how the ACL actually has started. ACL started with ACL repairs to begin with, where there were extra articular procedures which were performed for ACL deficient knees. Then we started doing tunnel re reconstructions of the ACL. We started transtibial, went transportal. And now again we are coming back to what is called as primary ACL repairs. Although a controversial topic, but definitely a thing which every orth arthroscopy surgeon needs to be in his or her armamentarium. So primary ACL repairs have come up lately with the evidence that some of the ACLs, they do heal if untreated. They are not copers, they really tend to heal. And especially if they peel off from the femoral side, the, uh, the incidence of healing or the potential of healing is really high. So ACL are an evolution as we sp spoke of. In early 70s, it was extra-articular procedures, then intra-articular in 80s, and now gold standard ACL reconstructions as we do, which are called as transportal ACL reconstructions. When we talk of ACL repairs, there are definitely certain advantages over ACL reconstructions if you choose a right kind of patient for this procedure. So what are the advantages? It is a less invasive procedure. It avoids graft donor site morbidity. It retains the native ACL anatomy and per se the mechanoreceptors which are present at the tibial attachment as well as the femoral attachment adding to the proprioception of the patient in the early rehab phases. It preserves the complex biomechanical properties of the ligament, allowing a faster recovery, and it sometimes can also allow a facial sparing option in pediatric population. So when we come to ACL repairs, we have got to know what is an ideal candidate for the ACL repair, and there has to be a certain indications and contraindications for any procedure we do in orthopedics or arthroscopy. So these are the common indications which are acute femoral avulsions. So Sherman has given a classification of type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4 depending upon the site of ACL injury. Then subsynovial ACL stretches or tears. More often than not, we find that in few cases, the knee is not very stable but not very unstable. It's a mushy endpoint for a lacrimis for an anterior drawer. And MRI reports interstitial tear of the ACL. The MRI may be misleading at few number of times. Many a times when you put your scope inside, you see that the synovial sheath is intact on the femoral side. You put your probe inside, especially in the hyperlax patients, and you feel that ACL is deficient, although the macrostructure is intact. So these are subsynovial stretches, which, are, which could be an indication for primary ACL repairs, where you retention the ACL by fixing it onto the femoral side. Then the partial ACL tears, this could be an indication for ACL augmentations with, uh, you know, either you're augmenting an AM bundle, more often than not, in isolated ACL injuries, you'll find PL bundle more, uh, uh, gets more injured as compared to the AM bundle, and pediatric patients as we talked of. The contraindications are chronic years of stump resorption. So if you have a chronic ACL tear, naturally you don't have a healthy ACL tissue there or a healthy collagen there, which you could repair. So chronic uh, ACL tears, then mid-substance tears. So mid-substance tears are not an indication for ACL repair, even if you're using a fiber tape augmentation or internal bracing. So we don't rely on fiber tape for the stability of the ACL. What we rely upon is a biological healing of the tissue to the bone. And third is poor quality ACL tissue. So even though you see that the ACL has come off from the femoral footprint, but if the synovial covering of the ACL is disrupted, and you see some loose fibers hanging here and there, then these are not good ligaments for the uh, repair. So that is the Sherman's classification, and the, the big boss here is the indication where you can do a primary ACL repair. So this is type 1, and type 1 is the indi only indication for me if I'm going to do an ACL repair. This is type 2, this is type 3, and this is type 4. So depending upon at what distance the ACL has got damaged, the Sherman has classified this, and type 1 is the only indication where you do it. 
A typical MRI picture which you see is you can see here there is a nice ACL tissue. Whatever looks jet black on the MRI is healthy is my contemplation and I always look at white shadows whenever I am looking at MRI scans in a T2 weighted images. So whatever looks black is healthy. So you can see this is a nice jet black ACL and it is running right parallel to the Blumen set line and when it runs parallel to the Blumen set line you know that the ACL exists and it exists there. So you see there is a peel off from the femoral side there and in the coronal section you can see that there is a peel off from there. So these are ideal indications for uh, ACL repair patients and there is, it is backed by a lot of evidence as well that the primary ACLs in these patients have resulted in good objective and subjective outcomes at 3.2 years follow-up in a carefully selected population. In a carefully selected population is the or are those the words which one must remember. The role of additional internal bracing is possibly beneficial but larger groups are needed to assess this. The level of evidence is 3. So if you want to augment it with internal brace or not, may be a matter of question but definitely you need to put back the femoral footprint onto the femur back. So to take you through a few little examples after this preamble, this is a 28 years male, pain, instability, left knee, 15 days, history of fall from a two-wheeler, valgus injury, minimal effusion, Lachman's grade 1, no collateral injury, no DNVC, MRI shows femoral side avulsion. And this is a typical, MRI, uh, typical arthroscopy picture. And you can see the synovial sheath is nicely intact. You can see a great anatomy there, that's a PL bundle injury, if you can see that. And you can see that the PL bundle is torn grade 2. So this is probably a single bundle injury, but whenever you are doing ACL reconstructions, what you are reconstructing is the AM footprint mainly. So your femoral tunnel is between the AM and PL footprints, anatomical ACL reconstructions. And if you have something of this kind, well, in selected patients, one can take a chance if the patient is not an active sports person and is a maybe a recreational athlete or a weekend warrior, I would take this patient for ACL repair. And that is what we did in this patient and that is how it is basically done. So whenever you are trying to do uh, ACL repair, these could be the options when you have a look at, uh, when you have a look at arthroscopy picture. You can conserve, whether you can conserve or not is a question. Most of us would not like to conserve ACLs now. Acute ACL repair, yes, if it is within first three weeks is my threshold for acute ACL repairs. If it is within first three weeks, I would definitely attempt if I feel so. ACL augmentation can be an option here where you just take SEMI-T and reconstruct the PL bundle, keeping the AM bundle intact. So that is called as ACL augmentations and a standard ACL reconstruction. So when you have such a nice healthy ACL tissue there, why, why lose that collagen? You are replacing the native collagen by a collagen from somewhere else which is not supposed to be where it is put. So if you have a tissue and that is why the concept of soft tissue preservation ACLs prevailed and as we heard in the uh, last talk uh, it also helps prevention of the uh, pivot shift. So the, the key points here are you have to take a take a portal and add a cannula to it because suture management is one thing which is very very important here because you are taking whip stitches there I am just running through the video so those were the whip stitches I'll, I'll show you how do you take them and this is a knotless anchor which has been put onto the femoral side and I am using I am going to use a fiber tape internal brace onto the TBL side so here what I have done is I have I have uh, drilled a K wire and I am drilling this with a 4.5 mm endo button drill bit. So it exactly matches the anchor and that's again an anchor which is going in which is a knotless anchor. So these both anchors are made by two different companies. You have two three basic companies making this they all are good anchors and I'll show you examples of all of them and that is how the internal brace sits in front of the ACL after you have repaired the ACL with a suture anchor and that functions at the seat belt mechanism and protects your repair while the ACL heals to the femoral footprint and that is the final picture. So when I was talking to you about taking these bites, 
you should always place in a cannula in the posterior medial portal so that your suture management becomes easier. Entanglement of the sutures is very very easy because when you are whip stitching this antero posterior and mediolateral, you are doing it through the same cannula. So when you take a bite and come out of it, the entanglement of suture is a rule. So you should see which suture goes in, which suture comes out and with shoulder equipment instruments like eye strong, you have to separate those stitches so that you have a even pressures which are put across the ACL there. So to show you that, this is how it is done. So here you can see that there is a femoral peel off. I use little radio frequency there to understand the anatomy of the footprint. I'm sorry for the video, this is one of the older cases. And you can see I'm going at the back of the knee to find out where is the anatomical footprint of the ACL. And you can see there now you can see that is the posterior most part of the femoral condyle. And that's probably the place where I'm going to place my anchor. That's a peel off. You can see there is little tissue onto the femoral footprint, but that's a peel off. So after I do this, I have always curated that area, made it raw to put the anchor in. So those are the stitches which you take. It's a number two fiber wire with any self retrieving device. And you start whip stitching it mediolaterally and anterior posteriorly, trying to catch hold of both the bundles if they are there. And you will see that when I am taking, taking the sutures there, when they come out of the cannula, one can, I'll just take two minutes more if you allow me. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's how, now you can see that suture configuration. So that's a nice whip stitching which is done. And then you create a femoral footprint, again the same way which you saw in the last video. Here this is another type of anchor made by some other company. And you have to go through the laser mark. So to be honest, this is, these are called as footprint anchors made by Smith and Nephew. The first one on the TBL side which, which you saw was a swivel lock which is made by Arthrex. And uh, there also on the femoral side was the same footprint anchor. So here I have not used an internal brace. So my usage of internal brace is not very, very common, but in select few, I would definitely use it. So that's the way how you put the, uh, put the anchor in and you create few micro fractures there for the biology to help the healing of uh, this uh, ACL repair. So suture management, taking sutures and having a nice healthy whip stitch ligament is a prerequisite to repair the ACL and that is the final tension which one can see. That's my last case. Again, this is a very short case. Now, this is another anchor which is being used. Now, here also you will see that's a nice synovial lining. The ACL looks pretty good there. So, the first view when you have a look at the ACL, you should be in a position to decide whether you're going to repair or not and if the patient has reported right in time. So, this is also a PL bundle injury. If you can see that there is some fraying of the PL bundle here. And as I said, that sometimes in younger patients, uh, I tend to repair ACLs more because even if you uh, lose uh, PL bundle, it usually doesn't matter. So that's a biotech anchor, which is a, again um, a knotless anchor, which is a nice anchor. The only difference is it has got some threads there, so you have to screw this uh, starting punch inside. Other, other equipments they have, you know, you can straight away hammer that inside. And hammer it till this peak material touches the bone and then keep on fixing this ligament there. So that's how the anchor goes in onto the medial side. Again, in this case, I haven't used an internal brace. So as far as possible, I try and avoid putting a lot of foreign material inside. And that's the final repair. So you can see AM bundle has been recreated. There is a PL tissue lying there. But still, it is a good repair for a low demand patient. And if you have a look at this, it's a good ACL repair there. So ACL repairs uh, definitely have a role in treatment of uh, acute ACL injuries. And this is the evidence uh, to tell you about the same. These are papers 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018 by our own Sachin Tapasvi. So it's almost simulates this paper there. All these papers, they talk about acute ACL repairs uh, being a viable option. So to conclude, keep in mind that careful assessment of the ACL for suitability of repair determines the outcome. Proximal avulsions with excellent tissue quality only are suitable for repair. In case of doubt, always perform a standard anatomic ACL reconstruction with remnant preservation. Only high strain suture material must be used, preferably with a self-retrieving suture passing instrument which you saw. 
Augmentation with high strain suture tape provides initial stability, protects the repair and allows early range of motion. The awl and suture anchor are introduced through the accessory medial portal to maintain the straight trajectory with the knee placed in 90 degrees of flexion. And if you are using an internal brace, you should fix the internal brace onto the tibial side with 30 degrees of flexion and not a 90 degrees of uh, uh, flexion. Otherwise, you may not recreate the same tension because you are using one device for two structures and there could be a differential tension. Thank you very much.